Hey guys, this is Iqbal from Systematic Chess Club. This September we are doing lots of game of Queen's Gambit and in this game we are going to discuss the Botvinnik and Larsen match that happened in Nordjuvik in 1965. And do you know Botvinnik uh, uh, has been a very great player of chess and his people is another great player. And Gary Kasparov used to learn the Queen's Gambit from Botvinnik and that's why this game we are covering right now. And so how this game, Botvinnik is playing with the white pieces, c4, e6, knight c3, d5, d4, knight f6. So this setup is Queen's Gambit decline setup, mainline variation. And you go for exchange, what Botvinnik goes for that, e captures d5, bishop g5, winning the knight c6, we know after the c6 is to be played and e3 with the idea to put the bishop on d3 and black plays at e7 queen c2 castles bishop d3 now this is the position where uh, black has uh, the way the better way is to put this rook over here and regroup the knights in such a way that he can prevent this a defense a strong in the defense and that is to be done but now knight bd7 and then knight ge2 h6 so if h6 is played it looks natural but it slightly weakens the king side rook e8 knight f8 are better in this situation from black's perspective placing the rook on e8 placing the knight over here is relatively better but now he has question it what option you have you can come here you can come here or you can capture so the best way is to retrieve on h4 and that is what botvinnik did in this match and he retreated at bishop to h4 and now he played rook e8 and now f3 this time in the last match that we discussed botvinnik and KV, but when he prepared for the central attack, but now he has made the system. And at this stage, F3 is very, very robust. At this stage, if you are playing F3, that is the idea to play E4, E5. And if you are able to accomplish it, uh, you are going to get a very strong setup. But Larson, one of the very strong grandmaster. He was also a very great player and the theory was about being developed. The Queen's Gambit declined, uh, was in the process of the developing and our model is Botvinnik and Kasparov for Queen's Gambit and declined portion. They used to play very well and now he immediately attacks the center with C5. So now your center is attacked. What to do? You just leave it as it is and you castle first safety of the king is most important you castle and now he plays a6 with the idea to play b5 so it seems that on the queen side black is gaining lots of space and that is a problem for you and how to handle that what happens if his pawns are marching in this direction and they are coming creating lots of pressure then what you have to do this is what we are going to cover in this video now it seems that black is in counterplay on the queen side and before white can make use of the center and the king side might be these pawns create a problem for the white and let us see what is going to happen next so you have to de complete the development you have castle but your development is not complete and can you tell me where the rook belongs to where you need to develop the rook you need to develop this rook a belongs to d if you are looking for the central attack so that you can safeguard your central pawns and so botvinnik plays the rook at a d1 and then b5 has been played so it seems that black has these pawns marching to us looking that he can make a sound victory in the queen side and how are you going to stop that how are you going to stop that uh, is the idea is now he goes for b5 so first uh, at this stage b5 has been played and now the moment b5 has been played botvinnik brought his pieces back to enrich his defense because the pawns are marching towards his camp and he played bishop f2 so that he can 
keep the center intact and also this diagonal is might open when the exchange happens now he plays c4 attacking the bishop so at this stage black has a very very strong pawn structure white has gambit the pawn the c file is open and now half semi open and now what to do his bishop is under attack it seems it might get trapped the only square which is safe here is this square and this is where bishop has both winning plays the bishop on f5 knight bd 6 with the idea to come inside strengthening his structure and also safeguarding the central now black should have taken the opportunity to disturb white with knight g3 probably the knight g3 could have uh, now he plays knight to g3 uh, this is slight an inaccuracy a3 is better and bishop d7 comes but this is an inaccuracy he has played knight g3 in order to push and play the plan that white has to play f3 f4 and e4, e5. This is the plan, right? He goes back, activating the rope and producing a central and filing more stronger. And now he plays a3 so that he can prevent the b4 ideas. But he goes for the bishop on b7, again strengthening the center. And might be looking to place the knight at a better location. Now e4. So this is the right time that white wanted to play and now he has played it and what is going to happen so despite moving this idea he should have captured it could have been better but now the pawn break the central attack is commencing from both winning and larson had to do something larson attacks the bishop he retreats the bishop to s3 a5 now it is inevitable that B4 will be played and now he plays E5 so he is attacking the knight and now Larson plays B4 so that's the beauty of the game that they are playing and they are very tossing there and they are trying to do something and to get the breakthrough in the queen side the black is trying to get the breakthrough in the queen side and white is trying to intimate a central attack and get a very strong position and that's how if you are playing the queen's gambit this game can be your role model and you need to analyze it now he retreats the knight he asks him if you want to capture me capture no problem now knight to h7 he retreats the knight to h7 and now f4 has been played so both the knights are safe now this knight is also safe but if you see the central position that is what queen's gambit is all about that you have to keep a control on the center and advance your central pounds to produce a very strong attack probably you will end up in the checkmate if you are playing correctly and if you are placing the pounds in the right way the offense on the king side will dictate the rest of the game let us see what happens bishop to c6 looking to get some breakthrough rook comes to at e1 now bishop to a4 attacking the queen queen retreats to b1 f5 so white was about to play uh, probably the move uh, f5 but he has played the f5 in order to prevent the f5 ideas but here he captures on b4 a captures b4 and now knight captures on f5 can you see it's a very very brilliant move why it's a brilliant move it will reactivate the bishop now he captures on g5 and bishop captures on f5 so he has uh, sacrificed but it is an instructive piece of sacrifice white removes any obstacle in the front of his pawns is stripping black skin of his protective pawns so now you see the king is exposed and how it is going to make you win. Now queen comes here because this knight is under threat and to safeguard it the queen comes to e7. Now knight is coming into the play. A much stronger move was bishop g6. If you would have played bishop to g6 
that was relatively a much stronger move but he has gone for so this was a much stronger move at this stage as for the computers and then rook goes there f5 this was planting the bishop over there and looking to play immediately uh, f6 but he played knight g3 at that stage and now bishop d7 he gets off the bishop he captures it and now a check is coming here and the knight is coming on a very strong square what he's going to do he puts to get the queen off the board he goes there attacking the rook rook captures he captures and now he puts the queen on f7 rook is and now rook has gone to the seventh rank and knight captures e5 so he is very afraid of this idea that this pawn is really making very strong and that's why he has to pay back the knight that he has already uh, got winning sacrificed but larson gave the knight out here and now he captures from this is very important that you are capturing from this side and these three pawns are looking very dangerous if you're not wise enough you may lose the game and at this stage queen e6 trying to get the queen of the board and but when it captures the larson's queen and rook captures it and now the knight comes on f1 rook c6 the king is start mass on f1 because if the end game has started then you should put the king in the center of the board to get any advantage and now c3 he captures he captures so there is a very strong pass pawn but not, not worry because uh, this square is in your control he cannot come from this side to get the queening square and so now he safeguards the queening square first he comes he gets it off the board and now see the king comes to e2 knight is maneuvered looking to go for some idea and see the pawn structure of Bartolini right now they are looking very robust the only trouble is these two pawns that he has to get it off the, he cannot march it it is in his control and now he march h5 king comes there and now he has to play that he maneuvered the knight d6 rook goes back on c7 he comes back it is clear that he is going to march f5 and now f5 has been played attacking the knight if knight moves you are going to get d4 knight d8 and now he goes for a check he comes there and now he got the square d5 in his control and looking the rook goes to b7 e6 and now e6 is marching and it, this knight is controlling the spinning square so now he has two attacks so game is going right away and now the rook comes here he moves there with a the check he captures the pawn he goes for at this stage uh, when the uh, king captures d4 he has to resign it because now these two pass pawns cannot be stopped and this is coming with a check and that is getting very dangerous and in this way but when it won it so let me quickly cover the entire game and the key points i will highlight so this is the queen's gambit decline setup exchange variation you pin the knight first then play e3 to put the bishop at d3 queen goes to c2 first then bishop comes at d3 knight goes on e2 and this is for the idea of f3 f4 e4 f5 and that is the most important idea bishop the three twenty percent and now this is the plan that you have to look for rook a belongs to d1 this is what you need to remember and despite playing this it is better for black to play a rook over here put it the knights over here so that he can regroup and attack in a better way that's all for today stay tuned this september we are doing all everything about queen's gambit and hope these videos are helping you if it is helping you please share it to your friends spread chess as much as you can and yes don't forget to subscribe thank you so much bye bye